What's up, everyone? I'm back again. And today, I'm going to talk about why I stopped watching um, finance channels on YouTube. And before I get into that, I would like to say this is not financial advice. This is not business advice. This is just some guy on YouTube just talking on his personal opinion on why I stopped listening to financial advice on YouTube. And... The, one of the main reason is they don't give advice from their personal aspect. They give a generic advice. And everybody's financial journey is different. And it causes me to think, hey, if they're giving a generic, it's for the generic population. But you can't really talk financial, help someone financially on YouTube without really talking to them. And if you're not a CPA or someone that's made it in their life before YouTube, they're not someone you listen to. Um, if somebody will make two hundred thousand on YouTube, but they didn't tell you that they spent three hundred thousand for advertisement for that um, channel, and it's just a bunch of lying deceit. And that's number two, right? You know, they're a bunch of liars. You know. They don't have any experience in real world. They just had some money. They borrow money and they put it into YouTube and they advertise their channel to make it grow. Because it's all about getting the, your channel out there. And no one will find your channel if you don't advertise. I mean, it's very slim or you network to get your channel to grow. Well, I was lucky enough. I grew my channel and I found a way to do it. And I did it by using shorts because people like to watch 15 second shorts and they'll subscribe because of a short. And then they see I have a financial channel, business channel. Some of them will watch it, some of them will unsubscribe. But I use shorts for it and don't pay as much in advertisement. But you still have to pay for advertisement if you want to grow your channel. And that's how it works on YouTube. There's the algorithm is you have to be able to keep their attention and you also have to, guess what, advertise to get the word out there. So some of these channels that have 100, 200,000, a million subscribers um, have no watch hours because they just advertise and people just randomly subscribe. And number three is just because they're a big channel doesn't mean all their subscribers are real people. And what do I mean by that? I found out you can buy bots and buy fake subscribers on some of these places. And so they didn't grow their channel with their advice. They grew their channel with their money. So if they're growing their channel with their money, it, do you really want to listen to someone who's spending more money to grow their YouTube channel than they make? Come on, really think about that. Their, their cash flow is negative on YouTube, but they'll show you, hey, I'm making... 200,000 on YouTube. Well, if they're cash flow negative, they, it makes no freaking sense to listen to them. That's bad financial advice. And you don't listen to someone who can't even get their financial life together or that isn't a millionaire already. Would you rather listen to someone who came onto YouTube that's a millionaire already? Or would you rather listen to someone that's became a millionaire through YouTube? And in my personal opinion, I'd rather talk to someone that became a millionaire before they went on YouTube and financial advice. Because there's some investors or stock portfolios that I listen to on YouTube because, you know, they Gen X dividend investor, right? He's a very good one. He talks about the stocks. He talks about why he invests in it. And he gives his personal opinion on it. And he comes from a very strong background where he was a, you know, very successful person. Now, why should you listen to someone like me? You shouldn't listen to someone like me unless you want to replicate what I have done. You know, I saved up enough for retirement that I don't have to invest no more in retirement. And that retirement account will be good for me to retire in. That's a pretty good reason to listen to me. And two, I ran a multi-million dollar business and from a ground zero 
from zero dollars to making you know 10 million a year and then back down to you know nothing because bad business partner so i can tell you hey business goes up and down entrepreneurship sucks all this stuff because i experienced it in life now i always give my opinion off of what i would do in a situation not what hey what would grand stefan do in this situation well grand stefan no offense to him made his money in real estate so should you listen to advice on real estate yeah if you want to get into real estate and he explains how to invest in proper real estate and but if he gives you financial advice he pretty much say hey live below your means it's the main concept he says and yes that's great financial advice live below your means and then you know like someone like dave ramsey he gives a very good financial advice for the general public great for it because not everyone should follow the same type of um advice right and you should always talk to financial advisors like i tell you before you make any major decision you need to talk to your spouse before you make any major decision because financial advice if you follow some guy on youtube they could be lying to you and they could be telling you to buy this stock and they're pumping and dumping that stock with a group of friends so they i found out you know there's some youtubers that will get like 10 people together to all make an investment at the same time they all drop like 10 20 30,000 cost of stock to go up until all their youtuber subscribers hey man we're gonna be this is a great stock but you need to do your research on that stock because it could be a horrible stock and you're investing money in a horrible company just because they're gonna pump and dump it if you don't know what pumping and dumping is, they'll get a bunch of people together, they invest in it, and then whenever they hit a certain amount, they all sell out at the same time. So then they'll dump it, and then you're you lose thousands of dollars if you don't catch it fast enough. And those are the people that are on YouTube, and I watched it over and over, and I try to follow some of them, and I lost money the first year in investing in stocks by myself because I was trying to listen to these people's advice, you know, and I was like, you know what? These people don't actually know what the heck they're talking about with financial or stocks. So whenever I started doing my own research and my own studies, I became more financially successful. And that's, you know, your financial journey is number four, is all about your financial journey. So you have to do your research and get educated. You can use YouTube to learn the basics, but don't listen to every word on YouTube. Because some of these people are negative network and they're giving financial advice. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. But they do it because they have the base and they put all their money on buying these subscribers, right? You know, the, some people have fake subscribers. And they don't make no money on YouTube, but they have the subscriber account. Um, I've seen someone that says t he made all the money, made viral account off a of shorts and then... I did some digging in the background and he paid five thousand dollars to advertise that short to cause that spike but it made a, for a great video but the average person watching youtube would not know that i thought it was skeptical so i looked it up and is it true that some people give good financial advice on youtube yes but a lot of them do not give good financial advice. A lot of them don't give good business advice. And this is just me telling everyone that, hey, number five is the reason why is everyone is different. And your financial journey is your journey. So please do your own research and use these videos that I make for the basic understanding and to expand your knowledge don't take everything i say too serious and always always do your own research in your financial journey because it's your financial journey so to sum it up you know this it's your financial journey you should be using youtube and not following it as a bible not following it like it's the way you need to do it it's because everyone financial journey is different and 
I'm saying this so you understand that why I stopped listening to financial advisor on YouTube is because the main reason is they're fake. They're lying to you. They deceive you. And they just pay for their subscribers. They pay for their views. Some of these channels, not all of them. So if you look at it that way, okay, how many of them are actually professional? And that's, you know, number four, five, or whatever you want to call it, is how many of these people are actually professional and actually done something with their life? Not many. Many of them have done nothing with their life. And you know what? Why would you listen to someone who had done nothing with his life? Listen to someone who had done something in life because that's how you become successful by listening to people that give advice from their personal opinion, from their success in life. Not, and also don't forget from their failure in life so you know what not to do. I can tell you a lot of things not to do in business. Um, I learned it all the hard way because I followed what the books told me. I read books about it, but nothing is the same as what they tell you on YouTube or on the books. And the best example to say, have y'all anyone ever studied with people on YouTube with their ideas and then for a test and then you can do everything on YouTube video, but when it comes to the test, you fail. Why? Because you use a generic thing that they made, but the best way to study for your test is using your teacher's notes, not some random person on YouTube. And because they're making the test, not the person on YouTube. You should use YouTube to learn a method to, to do math, learn the method of science, learn the method of finance, learn the method of business. But at the end of the day, if you're taking a test, the teacher who makes the test is the one that gives you the best study notes. So you use the method online to learn the basic, but then you have to use the notes from the class. And that's why I'm telling you, you are the test taker and you are giving the test at the same time as finance. So you make your choices that in life and finance that affects you. So you make that choices. And if you listen to some guy on YouTube say, hey, I only pay $10 a month for my Tesla. And then you find out, no, it's a business expense. He did all these loopholes for tax advantage. Well, you can't do that. And then it counts on what state you're in. Because let's say you did what some of these YouTubers did. And then you find out it's illegal in your state. Okay, now you're in trouble. So some of these tax loopholes, tax deduction, these finance advice may be illegal in your state. That's why I tell you, talk to a financial advisor because that's their profession. That's what they do. So before you listen to financial advice on YouTube, make sure you always talk to a financial advisor, CPA or bookkeeper. I found out that I got a new CPA or a new bookkeeper that my old bookkeeper was labeling everything wrong. So now I have to pay thousands of dollars for me to fix my books because the person who was doing it didn't do it properly. And luckily this new bookkeeper I have has what? Has a CPA degree or certification so I can trust it more valid because now that person is certified to do accounting. So would you trust a certified person or a non-certified person? Well, this person is certified in the state of Texas, so I trust them better. Well, Thanks for watching my video. Please like and subscribe. And this is just a video about, hey, why I stopped listening to financial advice on YouTube.